tell you what, though, I don't think this power cord is long enough. <laughs> I don't think we're going to be able to make right, it to the outlet. A couple of notes here. One, we've got an unloader valve, right? So that's the red knob on the side. And so the unloader valve can't, you can't butt it up against the wall because it kicks out when you're, when, you know, when it when turns use on, it, yeah. right? So we want to make sure our shelf's up against the wall. We'll worry about it. It's going to shift and move as we're messing around here. But we'll center it all when we're... Yeah, so we're going to put anti-vibration clamps on here to keep it from falling off the shelf. But I wanted it to sit somewhat flush, so I didn't want to do a 10-inch shelf. I wanted to stay with eight. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you just kind of eyeball it into position. And then notice I've got a finger gap. So let me show That's you about that. what you need? So that's what, about a half inch gap? Yeah. We can probably pump butt it in a little bit. I was gonna ask what the gap and needs so that's, to be. This is part of the reason why I didn't drill these, have these pre-drilled. So over here, notice I've got about my finger gap in between. So we can come maybe a little bit further in. So we gotta, we got about a, we're gonna maintain about a pinky gap, right? Don't mess with the unloader valve. Everybody always turns the unloader valve, but everybody always calls me and says, my pressure washer's not making as much pressure as I thought it would. Connects. I said, did you mess with the unloader valve? You, well, yeah, I turned it all the way out or whatever the heck it, I don't know. We, we want it wide open. Just don't touch it. Leave it go. It's, it needs to be turned, wide open means it's turned all the way in, tight. And everybody always loosens it. Let's get our little anti-vibration clamp pack. Which this comes in the piping kit. No, this comes with the shelf. Okay, so with the shelf. All right, and I got three different off. sizes here. So the biggest size, which is the 12, I think. Uh, that's the 10, 10 millimeter. There's another 10. So those they should will be, be color coded, right? Are they all blue? No, nah, they're all blue. And these are the 12s. So the 12. Bigger clamp, obviously. Yep is um, a little bit wider, a little taller. Now you do have to kind of work at these things. They don't, you know, I want it, you want it to be tight, but when it's tight, it makes it a little harder to, to work with. And so we're gonna test fit it, and then we're gonna mark it, and then we're gonna drill the shelf. So you just do one on each side of the carrying post. Yep. So right up to the edge of this, yep. and then we're doing thumb screws, so you can always just take it off if you ever yeah. needed to. You know, if you wanted to make it yeah. semi-portable. I mean, it's not a two-second deal. But it's nice. You don't have to get a Phillips out. You don't have to. Right. But I don't think very many people are going to be taking these off the shelf. I just wanted to make it so that it stayed. Well, if you I have to send it back it semi, or something. Yeah, yeah semi-portable. If you need maintenance, you, need, you do need to change the oil at 50 hours. You don't need anything in the back because this will keep it flush. All right, so I maintain my finger gap. So here's our anti-vibration clamp I'm talking about. So we're gonna mark the holes in order to get it to fit. And so there's our, our shelf and what it looks like. This looks so good. See, the nice thing that I have is that, that a lot of people that will do better than this, like could do better than this, they won't do it. They just can't execute on things. Like the real hardcore engineer inventor types that would do way better than I could. They never get out they'd of their own way. They think too much about it. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they keep they, trying to perfect can, it. Because eventually you have to just go. Do it. Yeah. That's the whole other thing I'm talking about. You just have to leap. You just have to do it. And and then you have to be willing to, to you know have people vet it and then improve it and improve it and improve it and improve it. And, and it'll never be perfect. Yeah. All right. So now we need to drill our shelf. And it's a lot easier to do this now because I've done it once. <laughs> I drilled the holes in the wrong part of the shelf because I completely forgot about the unloader valve. And oh, so it was still, it was, okay. <laughs> yeah, like I completely forgot and then I had to re-drill it. So my shelf at my HQ had two sets of holes in it. Do you want the different drill bits? The metal? Yeah, we're going to need the metal. I don't think these are, oh no, these will do metal. So you can keep, they should. Just, just take those back. Saving you money left and right here. So I think we need an 1164 bit but we need to go through it with a tiny one first. Pilot it. Yeah. The reason why I didn't publish a lot of dimensions for these is because of this process of, you, you know, every every situation, every install is custom. It's gonna be a little different. Yeah, so like, the, like exactly like this, we were gonna go an inch wider. Right. It turned out to work out well, but. That's a nice drill. There's our pilots. 
Nope. Shoot. <laughs> A little bigger. I'm gonna go three sixteenths. Do you have any stainless steel cleaner? Upstairs, I believe. Yeah, let's um, let's clean it now before we put the Krenzla on. Here's the holes. Here and there. Good to go. Clean it up with stainless, just because underneath you won't be able to reach when we put the Krenzel back up there. But the sides we're about to touch again, so yeah. So don't worry about the sides. We're gonna about to drill those. Hold on. I was gonna clean the insides of the, the sides. Hmm? It's gonna clean the inside of the sides. Yeah, but we're about to be palming them. Mm -hmm. I have to drill them. All right. Even the insides? Yeah. So actually, before we mount this, we need zip ties. Because we're gonna zip tie the power cord. Get too far into this. I'm gonna take the power cord and prepare it. Man, that do give you a long power cord. Mm -hmm. That's ridiculous. That's what we always wanted. Shoot, does this fit through here? I can't remember. Nope. That did it the other way then. <laughs> See, some people have taken this off and mounted it directly to the shelf, but I like, I like to have the feet and the handle in case I do ever want to use it. Cut these. Yep. So what we have are these teeny tiny little T304 stainless wing nuts and bolts. Yeah, that looks like it's going to be a nightmare. Now get it in there. Once you can form them the first time, then they're a little easier to deal with in the future. Tighten her down. Yep. It's a nice little touch builder. I mean, when you see to not this have thing, to get a screwdriver up there. Yeah, and when you see this thing, it doesn't vibrate all that much. It's probably more of a formality than anything. But last thing you want is your thousand dollar pressure washer to fall off the shelf. You know, from push what? There we go. There you go. See, nice and nice and snug. Who's real we'll tucked in there? Here when we get. This done, this can probably get it go tighter, but I can't reach it. I can get it. So here's our clamps. Nice and nice and tight with our all our stainless hardware. And then the wing nuts go up underneath. All right, next up is our jumper hose. So the Krenzla has a funky M22 male connection. And so what we need to do, and you technically don't need to tape these. Anytime there's an O-ring, there's an O-ring inside. You don't need to tape it, but I tape it anyway, because why not? I'm good like that. It certainly can't hurt. I mean, I guess it could, but. And these quick, quick disconnects all come from you. Yep. We... So it's nice, it's permanent, but it's quick disconnect. Yeah. If there's ever an issue. Now, generally, on the custom install stuff, we generally don't, Torques, tape and torque. Yeah. Because we figure you're going to be custom installing anyway. So it, I mean, all that taping and torquing takes time and energy, lots of it. Doesn't seem like a big deal until you do 500 of them. Uh, we do tape and torque these because people have a really hard time tightening these down. So this M22 connection gives us a quick disconnect, which of course Troy isn't gonna need. You're not gonna need this. Nope, but, but it's nice. It's... If you can break it down nice and easily. Our swiveling end, the swiveling end goes in the hose reel. This is a three foot hose. I was torn between three and two. I have a two foot on mine, so this is gonna be a little bit longer, um, but just depending on, not everybody's gonna be able to put it this tight. Mm -hmm. Always one of my own personal camera, man. It's 
just like earlier. If you, so if you go to that tight, you know, NPT, it's just not tight enough. I've got to go tight. Like man up, give it what you got. It's probably an email I get more than anything, or a leak. I got a leak. Well, did you tape it? No. Okay, well, tape it. How tight did you make it? Well, I made it tight. Did you like man up tighten it or did you tighten it tight it? Well, I could probably stand to turn a few more turns, but I wasn't sure. So, my advice is man up tighten it. Like that. Okay. All right, so this swivel here, and I'm not sure why this hose reel does this, and all hose reels do. It would make more sense if this was fixed. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna mount and tack this to our shelf. So let's see. That's why it's nice to have the swiveling end, because then I can move it around and get it to fit the way I want. Let's see what I was saying, we're gonna end up touching up our walls anyway. So you see the three foot is not terrible to have. No, the two foot would've been. No, well the two foot we just go much more direct. Yeah. Well, I need one of the anti-vibration clamps. So this is where the 10, 10, 10 millimeter goes. All right, so these, the, man, these valves are incredible. Look at this thing. Look at how sick this thing is. So I do pretty, a pretty stout 11 or 12 turns of tape on this um, to get it to seat well in the, in, the, in the side of the, whatever you call this thing, the CR spotless. Because you can only torque it so far. So I send the package with that other wrench. Let's grab me that blue handled. This guy, the previous one. Which one? Which one? This that one? That one, yep. Yep. So this is the adjustable claw like wrench thingy that hooks on. No, oh, wrong way. Ready, tidy, lefty, loosey. <laughs> that So these are not stainless, they're zinc plated, but you'll see them when you get them, the stock internals on these, like the ball valve inside, it's just really amazing. And so this piping stuff is designed for air, and we're adapting it to use with water. That's all we can go. So that's why we put extra tape, because we can't, this, this nut hits on the end. So again, these aren't designed for this. I'm adapting this. And you can't change the way the handles go. So we're at the mercy of that. And you want to be careful not to mess it all up and make it look all mangled up with your wrench. So what you don't want to do is back it or turn it back out. All right. I'm going to keep it flush but they won't it won't torque down and then line up properly so you need to make sure you keep that in mind you need to torque it just enough as long as you taped it put, put plenty of tape on it and we're good all right so step one is drain the water out step two is we're going to take this off and then i'm going to take this and screw it in there yep. and then from there 
cotton and that's the, the We've design. got a T, right? So a T is going to go right here. Well, after this guy, you got this guy. Well, 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 right. So we got to put this here and then we got to figure out, this is the tricky part, exactly how long to make that little piece, right? Yeah. So that's the tricky part. But once we do that, actually the trickiest part, and then we got to cut this that. Guy. So we got to get this length right and, and that, that length right. right. At the same time. So we got to stop in here. And so this, stop. It's funny, it looks like it's plastic, but it's not. Aluminum, bro. Aluminium. Figure out which way it needs to go. We might end up losing our symmetry. It's functional, that's okay. It's, I see so, what you're saying. So this side, I don't think we're gonna be able to bring. To go the same, the same length out, that's, that's All right. fine. All right, so we're getting pretty close here to um, getting, it, getting it set up here. So I've been cutting a little bit at a time just because my measuring skills are suspect, to say the least. So I've got this bottom piece pretty well set in, ready to torque. Uh, we cut this about uh, an eighth of an inch too tall. So if I were to put this in place, I'm sloping up slightly. I don't think I'd be able to fit this in here. Yeah, so if I bring this down about an eighth of an inch, I think we got it licked. So. You know, we brought this, so I cut a, a pipe close to length here, brought this out. This pipe was up this high, right? So we had them touching so I could pick pick a center line. Then I cut this about, uh, about, a, about two eighths, so about a quarter inch short or long. And I cut this about an eighth of an inch long. And so I just wanted to be sure I was lined up and close. So now we've got a good a good close to accurate setup. So I'm gonna cut a little bit off of this and see how it fits. All right, so good news is everything's torqued, right? So torqued, torqued, torqued. The, the reason why you do the bent pipe is so that you can, you don't have to have it perfectly, you know, spaced off yeah, the wall, yeah. right? So now we've got, we're ready to go to do our little stub out here. So I think what we'll do is we'll do our 90. Get it out Bring that here. across. And then we, that's then our next difficult me measurement is we've got a, do a tiny little piece, fit a valve, and so actually, I think what we'll do, we'll do the tiny little piece, the valve, and then um, and then we'll know what height we need to go in order to fit that T. Well, I was going to say what what the tiny piece is just you pick a kind of size. I mean, we want it obviously. Well, there's a minimum minimum distance we need to go. Yeah, uh, probably three inches, right? I think right? it's four three and a half four. is I think what we need to do. So it's an inch pipe, another inch. Yeah. So a two inch pipe. Right. Two inch, two inch pipe showing. Right, because this inch. is this is an inch. So inch from and an here, eighth. so if you take this off, so from where it stops to here is an inch and a sixteenth. So times right? two plus but your pipe. But then line. we have the distance for this, right? Yeah, so there's yeah. a there's a lip in here. So I think it was four and a half was the dimension we need to do. So we're going to cut off a little piece of this pipe. Well, that right down there, the piece at the bottom. Yeah. Because if you look, if we do this. If we put this in here. You'll see how far down you it goes. You lose a bunch of pipe. We can actually measure that right here. So that is, yeah, inch and three quarters. So we need inch, th so we need two inches, three and a half inches, plus another inch, four and a half inches. Four and a half. Yep. So I'm going to cut this to four, four and a half. Four and a half. Okay. So we're going four and a half. And then normally, I didn't want to try to get it on the plane but I have like a really awesome pipe cutter, but this is all they had at Lowe's. This little rinky dink thing. And so then I'm going on my line right here. And so we torque it a little bit, right? Twist it, torque it, twist it, turn it, twist it, turn it, turn it. We just kind of work our pipe, getting a little bit more cut each, each time. Okay, so there's our piece. I think that's the one we need. And then we take a little deburring tool that I send with the piping package. And we go around like this. There are bigger, better deburring tools. I have those, but they're like 200 bucks. 
So this one does the job pretty well for just a few bucks. So we deburr both sides, going back and forth each direction. This cutter has been doing an okay job on the outside of the pipe. And so now we're good, okay? So then what we do is we take this, all right? And so we're gonna take a rubber piece. And actually, if you're doing it on a longer piece, you take the cap, then we take the, whatever that crimping piece is, and then our little rubber O-ring. And essentially what happens is this pushes the O-ring in place inside of the inside of the connection. So we come here, push it down until it stops. Let's see, push it down until it stops. We push our our little plastic piece on there, and then we are able to twist and torque that into place. And if it doesn't twist easily, then you'll, you'll likely have, you have it, you don't have it seated properly, so you have to pull it out and keep, keep tweaking it. So you ought to be able to, by hand, turn it almost all the way to the to stop. And then we grab our wrench when I'm ready, and we'll go and we'll torque it down. I'm not gonna do that yet, because I wanna put the T on, so we're gonna need, actually we're gonna need a valve here. I mean, check this stuff out, man, it's freaking amazing. Just really, really high quality stuff. So check that thing out. It just, it just looks like, like it's just. But look at just the like, look at this. Look at the ball, the ball in there. Look at how awesome that is. Yeah, it's just like like this could it's paperweight. Like it's like <laughs> it, it look. It just it's right. like a. It's just yeah, a it's different. It's like look. the hose rail, man. It's just super. The, the only thing that's probably that would be better than these would be swage lock. But are they blue? <laughs> no, they're not. They'd, they'd be all stainless. This is zinc, zinc plated brass. And we're showing all the, we're showing all the lettering and. The, the yeah, text. we're gonna go. We're gonna go letters out. I like it. I think it looks cool. So this four and a half inches should be enough for us to fit our valve. This is tricky because you gotta get it the this, right level. Yeah, this one has, oh no, it doesn't. Okay, we're good. So you do the valve and then you do the 90. So we're gonna do the valve and a T on this one. That's what I meant, yeah, a T. Cause the T is gonna have to come right across. The valves are always a little more difficult to deal with. So there's a little, you can have a little See, the bit valve, Well, the valves never really gap, they always leave a little bit more of a gap in the. So four and a, four and a half, we said, is the minimum for regardless of any pipe, right? Four and a half what? Inches is the minimum for any, Yep. anything. See, because even though we see the little gap here, Yeah. in order to be able to fit the piece on, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. To be able to, yeah, these, to, be able to get it, you have to, yeah. Together, we need four and because a half. of the length of the compression fittings, yeah. Right. Okay, so now we need another four and a half. Yep, so we'll for cut, our cut right off of there. We just taped our reducer fitting, right? Uh, I think it's, if I remember correctly, it's better to torque this on now first. And because this, as you torque this in, it locks down. So it swivels until you torque everything. So we'll have to grab some, uh, grab something and torque that in a minute here. So let's get this, shoot. Let's take our little protector off of here. I'll let Troy, Troy deal with Goo Gone later because I'm in a uh, time crunch for food, food and energy. <laughs> so. This, uh, this is T316. I couldn't find a T316 elbow, uh, so we're doing T304. So for those of you purists, you're gonna get bent out of shape because I'm dealing with all kinds of different part metal metallurgies, to say that 10 times fast, uh, and that we're going from T316 to T304 to brass. So 
Sorry about that, but that's what we're working with here. Four, five, six, seven. And then we're going to take, so what we're doing is we're taking our, this is three quarter inch NPT to three quarter inch NPT. And we'll have to take some channel locks and torque this down in a minute. But I'm going to give you just the basic idea and then I'll go torque everything. And then we're going to take and our brass fitting. Now the reason why I did brass here is that sucker in stainless is like 35 bucks and you don't really see much of it anyway. And we're going, we're connecting into brass. On the Krenzla. Yeah. So I probably shouldn't even use the stainless quick disconnects, but I don't know. And my continuity with the different types of metals is not so great. These things are so hard to find and figure out that sometimes you just have to do, you just have to go. Okay, so we'll torque that, and then we'll put our stainless quick disconnects. We're going to put one on the inlet here of the Krenzla, and then that way we'll be able to snap this directly on in place. So I'm going to go and torque this, torque this, and then I'll show you how we connect it to our piping package here in a minute. Check it out. So we got the hose in. Man, it's so awesome. Look at that. All right, so we've got one last, two last cuts to make here on the right here. On this side. And then uh, we'll put the CR filters on. We're making some progress here, we're almost done. Well, at least almost done to at least test it and then find out what blows up. But look, we've got all our Prevost piping in all by ourselves, man. No plumbers, no calls to Mike, no, this, no trips to Home Depot. No calls to Uncle Gene. <laughs> yeah, no Uncle Gene calls, just this us. Was, this was stressful. All right, so now let's, we're getting our CR set up. You guys have seen me set up the CR before. Apparently, Roy, Troy doesn't watch any of my videos, so he's never mm, seen this. No, I hate that guy. You don't like watching hour-long videos of me unboxing a CR? <laughs> I've actually never heard of you until like two uh, days ago. Yeah, came up here to use you for your, for well, your views. Yeah, yeah, that's, thanks, man. Used for the views. <laughs> Been working 15-hour days, feeding you. It's unreal. You're, you're ridiculous. And by feeding, you mean driving me to the restaurant? <laughs> yeah, that's All it. Right. So you just put the, the, that's the centering ring, right? So it keeps the, keeps the, uh, whatever it's called, the resin filter from, from moving around. Up. So you just, just jam it on there and it'll sit right on top. All right. Boom, that's it. And then we screw it on. Look how stout that feels on the wall. I won't tell you that one of those screws didn't, isn't hitting anything. Thanks. Now, what? they've, oh, it's cool. They've reinforced the tool. The tool's twice as thick as it was before. Oh, man. Dude, Let's I'm put our gun on here. I'm nervous. I got like butterflies in my stomach. Put our gun on so we don't shoot water all over the place. <laughs> all right. Let me plug in my really short cable. This is off, right? You got power. Okay. All so right. Now, everything's open. You so got a now rag. These are closed. So, so we're turn going... it on. Let's make sure this doesn't explode. Okay. I'm going to leave then... the door open. Yeah. And I'll yell at the top of my lungs when it blows up. Just yell off. Here we go. Three. Luna. Oh, no, 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 no. Hold on. Cat alert. Now get out of here. I got to leave it like this. All right. All right. Water in three, two, one. We're safe. Okay, now let's try our main. Hold on. <laughs> I'm so paranoid. <laughs> Just wait. Wait a minute. Drip. Okay. The two spots where we assumed. Let's fill in the hose. So we've got to retorque that. And I'm going to retorque this. Okay. okay. So we just leave this off. We'll here, grab your bucket and we'll run this in the bucket. 
I have these really, really cheap buckets. I don't know if you've seen them before. They're these really cheap buckets. Little five gallon buckets. Just bring it over here. Come on, stop jerking around. Matt gets really upset when he gets tired. Now what I'm gonna do, I guess I'm gonna take, take this off. Here, bring the bucket up here and I'll run this out. You can just set that on the ground. Yeah. Are we gonna unplug it or just leave it wrapped? No, just leave it, yeah. Because that'll keep it from dripping. Okay. We didn't have the right tools for this, so that's why it's leaking. Just okay. needs torqued a little more. That's it. I didn't, I didn't remove it. I just tried to torque it when I was on here. I think I'm going to take this off. I'll just take the whole thing off. Which way does it turn? That way. Always the opposite way of what I think it is. <laughs> Always. Okay. We can pretend like we didn't turn it on. <laughs> we'll just test it tomorrow, right? You're doing well. If, we, if that's all that we have is a little drip, it just needs to be, and we need to, we need to loosen this, retorque re it. What we need is a big set of wrenches. We need like the 20 millimeter stuff. So I would get in the practice of, you would always want to turn these off. Turn them off, run, and, turn, the and off. turn the pump off. And pop the GFI. This is the part that drive people crazy, like when you go through all this work and you have a leak or something like that. But it's all part of the deal. At least it's up here. Yeah. At least it's on that. Like this, is, I'm, I'm worried about like... Yeah, there's not, yeah. We're so good. We're good on all that. All right, so we just ran some water through the system. Um, everything's good. All this is clean, no leaks, no issues. Everything's level, everything's square. Um, we had a little leak on the gun, which I think, um, you know, sometimes this can happen where, you know, we torque these, mm -hmm. you know, it's not using a torque wrench and we tape them, uh, but sometimes you'll have to redo it, you know, it's just if you might, you, there's you like never, a little squeeze leak. You can you never know. hit a hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, NPT threads, a lot of times water can leak through. So maybe we need to do a rewrap. And so you need to be prepared sometimes to do that kind of thing. And then we don't have the right tools to get a good amount of torque on this elbow and then this connection here. So we have a, like a little drip, like probably a drip Seeping. per minute, yeah, yeah, a little seep leak, which is great news. I mean, we know we can fix that. We really were concerned easily. about yeah. this, you know, and, and right. I was, I literally, I was sitting there, I was like getting ready to turn the water on and I got like, <laughs> like, because I'm sitting there after all the drywall fiasco and this actually went quite well. We really took our time with the piping. The, the recommendation for us, at least what worked well for us with the piping, as with anything, think through it. You'll you'll burn some brain power doing this piece right here. Yeah, uh, I mean, some people that have like in just the knack for that they kind can of mechanical do it, but stuff. If you do that all the time, but if you're just a weekend goof like we take are, take it take it in yeah. segments. Step away, go do something yeah. else. Come back. You really want to? I mean, we really measured only right. a very. I think we recut one thing a mm -hmm. little bit, like twice. I think two pieces we cut. Yeah. But we were taking off very minute amounts, so we yeah. Uh, so I sent three pipes. We didn't we didn't we, touch the third pipe, um, which is good. So um, I got an extra lightsaber. Yeah, well, it's good to have that in case you do make a wrong cut. That's why I factored yeah. in. I knew we would need you'd need two two. Uh, I think these are thirty three and a half inches. So I knew you would need two of them yeah. likely, plus the bent pipe. Mm -hmm. um, but that extra piece is there for the the I'd, screw up. Like I said, for me. Go after doing this and seeing the, the the pressure on that bent pipe. Yeah. If you are not 100% sure with it, either get a plumber, but a plumber may not have ever worked with this before. So Matt, thankfully, has worked with it. Buy a second bent pipe, yeah. just to have it, right? And it, yeah. So we have um, a couple of tweaks. We got to clean this place up. We'll yeah. use it tomorrow. We got to go get. A, I, I didn't put the darn tip in the box, despite the fact we triple checked it happens. Um, but the CR is functioning. Everything looks good. Um, we have the Mosmatic set up, so tomorrow we'll set up the wand holder, um, we'll tweak this, we'll get the right tools to fix that. Um, cut the power cord? Yeah, we got to cut the power cord, shorten it, you know, so we'll, 
we'll actually tack it down to the side here and do a drip whip. And then you know, patch the wall and everything. And yeah, patch, paint. Um, which we don't have much clean. painting to do. It's just just yeah. some little nicks here, here and there. Yeah, behind the hose and all that. We're gonna Wipe everything down. And so the shelf is actually a little off center here. And button everything up, wipe the stainless down, make sure the crenz is functioning properly. Um, a lot of times when you're pulling from the CR, it's not instant on and off. There's a, there's a pressurization, you know, this has to wait to, to, for the water to pressurize to turn off. So you get like a, like a, I don't know, like a... It's a second delay and it's kind yeah. of like a little run at the end of it, but it's... Yeah. Um, so anyway, yeah, project. A lot more done today after dealing with the drywall. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so we, we do have um, we do have a little bit of work tomorrow. You know, our drywall job is I think ex acceptable. <laughs> With everything on the wall here, I'm not looking even remotely at the drywall. I'm looking at we had the, a little pulling here from the CR. Um, this side sits a little closer to the wall, but everything seems to be good. The only and the only the only thing with I would say the drywall too is this is almost mounted in where the drywall is at. So when we put this side of the lag in it there, pulled it, in, it yeah. pulled. So I mean. But at the end of the day, I mean, you guys can see if I step out of the way, you can see you're not looking for the drywall. You're looking at the prettiness of everything. That's so pretty sick. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Because what happens when the when the force pulls you back, your foot naturally comes off the gas. You have to keep your foot to the floor. The floor. Foot to the floor.